This is about biblical idioms and terms that are often misunderstood. <laughs> Hosea chapter 12 verse 10 says, And I have spoken unto the prophets, and I have multiplied visions, and by the hand of the prophets I use metaphor. Although certainly the Bible is to be understood literally in many places, and is to be taken seriously, and not just considered a book of giant metaphor without any literal meaning, one should not think that it is totally devoid of metaphors and symbolism. There are certain terms, when used in particular ways, that are not intended to be taken literally. For example, Isaiah chapter 44 verse 8 says that the Almighty is a rock, and it mentions in another place, such as Psalm chapter 91 verse 1, that he has a shadow. Of course, these are only idioms. Another example is uh, Psalm chapter 51 verse 1, where he is said to have wings, and even feathers in Psalm 91 verse 4. Hopefully anyone watching this automatically knows that the Almighty is not literally a rock. To worship a rock would be idolatry. This is the very thing the Bible is against. And if one wants to uh, take this literally, then we should ask, since when do rocks have feathers? <laughs> the same is true when the Bible refers to the Creator as having an eye, such as in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 10, and a mouth in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. We can go on and on. Sometimes it even says eye in singular, such as Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8, and then, in another place, it says eyes in plural, such as Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 12, or chapter 12, verse 28. So, does he have one eye, a cyclops, or many, like a spider? <laughs> Far be it that the creator of time and space has need of an eye or a mouth, or a body of any type. The Jewish people, historically, consider all such terms, when used in these ways, to be non-literal, and to have deeper metaphorical meanings not implicit of any type of plurality in his being itself. After all, the Bible also plainly expresses that there is no place that contains him. If he were to be literally housed in the container of a body or in the container of physical reality, in any type of form whatsoever, having one eye, a mouth, and however many fingers, then certainly he would also be contained in the heavens. But it is written, in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 18. But really, would God dwell on the earth with men? Behold, the heavens and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this house, the temple, which I have built. That's from the hand of King Solomon. The Almighty asks in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1, What place could be my resting place? In Isaiah chapter 46, verse 5, it is asked rhetorically, to whom will you compare me or consider me equal? To what will you consider me similar that we may be compared? For this reason, I hope to upload over time different clips that explain certain used metaphors or idiom, idioms that we often find in the Bible and that may unfortunately be understood in an anthropomorphic way, giving people ideas that the Creator has some sort of physical form or is in any way comparable to us or other created things.